Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the George N. Covert Courthouse. As you all know, we are here today to celebrate National Adoption Day. My name is Edward Boyle. I have the privilege of serving as the MC this morning. I presently serve here as the First Justice of the Probate and Family Court. However, today I have been specially designated to serve as a juvenile court so that I may participate in the proceedings. I'd like to start by thanking Brooke Boucher for her singing this morning. <clears throat> I speak for everyone who works in this building when I say that this is the best day of the year. Because today, we have the privilege of participating in the formation of new families. Boys and girls of all ages will leave this building today knowing that they are a permanent member of a family. The new adoptive parents will leave with the comfort of knowing that their son or daughter will be with them for all time. Any doubts and concerns that they may have had having been resolved. As the day unfolds, stories will be told of how the participants got together and how over time the bonds that join members of a family together were established. Today, those bonds will be cemented. I would like to introduce some of the people in attendance today. We have the Honorable Jeffrey Locke, the Chief Justice of the Trial Court, the Honorable Siobhan Foley, Associate Justice of the Bristol County Juvenile Court, the Honorable Mary O'Sullivan Smith, an Associate Justice of the Barnstable County Juvenile Court, the Honorable Dana Gershengorn, Associate Justice of the Plymouth County Juvenile Court, the Honorable Michaela Stewart, Associate Justice of the Bristol County Juvenile Court, the Honorable Amy Nectum, the Chief Justice of the Juvenile Court in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We also have Commissioner Spears from DCF, and we have First Lady Lauren Baker here today. Also joining us, are, uh, did I mention Mayor Robert Sullivan? I don't know that I did. Mayor Sullivan is here, I believe. George Roper, who's a clerk magistrate here in the Plymouth County Juvenile Court. And Roger Oliveira, the clerk magistrate of the Bristol County Juvenile Court. Our first speaker this morning will be Mrs. Lauren Baker. Mrs. Baker currently serves, as you probably all know, as the First Lady of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, alongside her husband, Governor Charlie Baker. Did I, what did I forget? Like I said, would you please all stand for the national anthem? I obviously didn't take my Prevagen this morning. to the Bridgewater Rain and Marching Band, who will be entertaining us as the day goes on as well. Okay, I'll start again on this. Our first speaker this morning will be Mrs. Lauren Baker, who, as you know, is the First Lady of Massachusetts, alongside her husband, Governor Charlie Baker. In addition to her duties as First Lady, Mrs. Baker is a marketing communications consultant and serves on several boards. She indicates that her proudest accomplishment, however, is being the mother of three amazing adult children. Mrs. Baker. Good morning, everyone. 
What an incredible day of celebration we have, and I'm so, so happy to be part of all of this with you. I first wanted to say that um, I bring each and every one of you the warmest, most heartfelt greetings from my husband, the governor, Charlie Baker. He wishes he could be here today, but I'm the lucky one. Um, I can't tell you how honored I am to be here with all of you. This is a really special day, and um, it's just so meaningful to watch all of this joy happen right in front of our eyes. In, in my family, we have this saying that is, family is everything. And it's true, in our, our, our family, you know, um, we feel blessed. And uh, the family, your family, are the special people in your life who love you, who care for you, who have your back no matter what. And my family is my joy and my anchor in this life. And I believe really strongly that families come in all shapes and sizes and forms. And some of those people in your family are people who are blood relatives, but some of those people in your family are chosen. And in many ways, I think the family that you choose are even more special than the ones that you're born with. And today, we're celebrating families, all kinds of families, but in particular, special families who get to add a chosen family member today. And that is really a blessing. How lucky are all of us? Every child deserves a safe, loving, and permanent home. And in Massachusetts, we're really committed to finding a large, and diverse population, a community of all different kinds of parents so that our children who want to find their forever family can find the perfect match. And so today, as we celebrate these incredible adoptions, I want to make sure to extend my heartfelt gratitude first to the lucky um, adoptive families and the children who join them today and also to, to Mayor and to the courts and to the incredible, truly amazing social workers who helped make all of this joy happen today. So thank you for putting these children first and helping them find their forever home. Congratulations. Thank you, Mrs. Baker. The second speaker this morning is Judge Jeffrey Locke. Judge Locke is the Chief Justice of the Trial Court of Massachusetts. He was appointed to this position by the Supreme Judicial Court in January of 2022, after serving as a Superior Court Justice since 2001. He has dedicated his career to public service, having also served as Commissioner of the Department of Social Services, District Attorney in Norfolk County, and as an Assistant U.S. Attorney. Judge Locke. Thank you, Judge Boyle, First Lady Baker, Chief Justice Nectum, Commissioner Spears, and to all our distinguished judges, guests, participants, both large and small, I thank you for the opportunity to be part of today's celebration. For our courts, this is perhaps the most happy day of the year. It is one day where the courthouse is full of smiles and the courthouse exudes hope. And that is so different from the many cases that we deal with where people have come before the courts in times of crisis and struggle. To be here uh, for a day of joy and happiness is a unique honor for all of us. It's a day of celebration, as was mentioned, but it's as well a day of thanksgiving and perhaps we celebrate thanksgiving here in the brockton court one week early 
we celebrate the union of new parents uh, and uh, new family members, uh, both sons and daughters. But we also give thanks to all those who have made today possible. Commissioner Spears, to you and the thousands of social workers at the Department of Children and Families, whose sole mission and passion is the safety of children. We thank you for your hard work. <clears throat> and to the folks at the Massachusetts Adoption Resource Exchange, which works tirelessly uh, to unite hopeful parents with children in need, uh, and in need of hope and love and permanency, we thank you for your unending efforts. Uh, to our court community, to our judges, our clerks, our registers, to our probation officers, our advocates and investigators, and all those who work endlessly to bring children into a safe and permanent setting, we thank you. And let us not forget those without whom today would not be possible. That is, to the adults, to the families, to the parents who have stepped forth today and opened your hearts and your homes. Uh, we thank you for making today possible. And lastly, but perhaps most importantly, to our children that are here today, your long road of uncertainty is over. You now have a safe, a loving, and a permanent place to call home. With the love, the support, and the guidance of your new parents, your future is now full of hope and opportunity. And we wish you only the best. To become whatever you wish to be, please go forth and thrive from today forward. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Luck. Our next speaker is Judge Amy Nectum. Judge Nectum serves as the Chief Justice of the Massachusetts Juvenile Court. In that capacity, she oversees and advances the administration and management of policy and practice affecting juvenile justice and child welfare matters in the courts throughout the Commonwealth. Judge Nectum. Good morning. Now, I think we uh, should start every day with a marching band. Is that the best? Can we have another a round of applause for them? So I think we have to keep that spirit of the marching band in our mind's eye and our mind's heart as every day we get up into the world and address the, the, the troubles in front of us, the joys in front of us, and ensure that we do the very best that we can. On behalf of the juvenile court, all of our judges across the Commonwealth and across, actually, across the country today, we're celebrating National Adoption Day 2022. We haven't had the opportunity to be together in two years, so this is very heartfelt for us to be here today. We celebrate the joy with you all. This is your day to celebrate. And I see Gerald on the move over there. If he wants to come up here with me, Tanya, does he want to come up here with me, Gerald? He can come on up here. <laughs> No? Okay. Before I, before I get into the celebration for the, for the children, I want to say thank you to Carolyn Gomes. Where are you, Carolyn? Carolyn is, she is absolutely outstanding. Without her leadership and her team and actually the entire southern region of the National Adoption Team Planning Committee, we wouldn't be here. And that's CPCS attorneys, 
it's the Department of Children and Families, it's Mrs. Baker, a representative of the, the governor who have, in her own work, is doing so much for children. It's mayor. It's bringing us all together to celebrate you. And the team that put this together, Carolyn, the clerk's office, the probation offices, it was, it was easy for them. It's easy for me to say it was easy, but the reason why I'm saying it's easy, because this is so important. This is such an important day because it is about all of you. It is about the celebration of what the parents, the grandparents, and the children have persevered and have gone through to get to this point. It's easy because it matters. It matters and all of you, nothing is more important than our children. And that's what we stand for in the juvenile court. I thank the judges for their leadership in the three counties that are participating today. It's Bristol, it's, uh, we usually have Norfolk, but it's Bristol and Plymouth County as well as Barnstable County. This is a day that we celebrate with all of you, friends, family, grandparents, and I have to just take a, a, a point right now to say that I know what it's like. I have the privilege to preside over adoption of Tanya and Gerald, right there. Gerald, you wanna to wave today? There he is, Gerald, come on up here. Come on up here. No way. Okay. I say that because my granddaughter is here, and my daughter, and I know the love of a, grand, of a grandmother, and it is just, it's immovable. There is nothing like it. So sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, families, come on up, Joe. We're going to stop you from crying. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to bring, uh, you know, Joe, you thought it, all the kids... No? 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 A little bit? I'm going to bring all the kids up. All the kids that are being adopted today. And we're going to have the band strike it up. Let's go. Come on. Right here. very, very much for that call. It is, thank you for your courage, your hope, and we stand up and salute you. We honor you. Thank you very much. Great job. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. you took my you took my book. <laughs> All right, I our final speaker this morning is Commissioner Linda Spears. Commissioner Spears was appointed to serve as Commissioner of the Massachusetts Department of Children and Families by Governor Charlie Baker in January of 2015. During her tenure at the agency, several key reforms have been adopted, including increasing the number of adoptions in the Commonwealth. Commissioner Spears. Okay, let's see if I can do this as a short one. How are you all? Yay. Good morning. This is a huge celebration. I am flashing back to the last time I was in this building for this event. Um, it was a few years ago. This is um, the eighth year 
that I have been at a national adoption day. And in that time, the department has increased the number of adoptions each year by 38%. And we're not done. More to do. There are 101 children across the Commonwealth being adopted today. But for me, it's exciting to be back in the room with all of our adoptive families and the kids who are out there who have found their forever and permanent homes. Um, congratulations to all the mamas and papas in the room. Thank you for all of the things that you have done to keep our kids safe, well, and thriving. It matters a tremendous amount. Kids, this is about you. This is your day. And we are so thrilled that they could care less. You know? <laughs> they could care less. <laughs> they just want to, you know, play. So anyway, um, I think it's just amazing that they are having the opportunity to love, to learn, and to thrive and grow. Last night I spent some time with some of our older youth, foster care alums, who are former adopted, ki adopted kids, foster kids, kids who return to bio families, who get together every Thanksgiving, almost 100 kids, who get together every Thanksgiving to support each other, to lift each other up, and to talk about how they've built their own families. It was amazing. They're now parents, and it's just amazing to see what folks like you have done to make their lives successful. So thank you, because it pays off, let me tell you. I saw 25 and 26-year-olds who are rocking it in the world today. Um, a young woman who is getting her master's degree in data analytics computing something I don't know anything about, <laughs> nothing. But anyway, um, it is just amazing. Adoption gives kids a home base, and I want everyone to know that out of your fierce advocacy, good comes, and that we at the department deeply appreciate that. This year is the 20th year that we have done a National Adoption Day in Massachusetts. Now, we had a couple of years where we didn't get together physically and in person, but I do want you to know that throughout the pandemic, the courts, the social workers, the attorneys, the judges all continued to work to get adoptions done. In the first year of the pandemic, we did 820 adoptions. And the second year, when everyone was 100% on lockdown all year, we did 750 adoptions. It's some really, really amazing stuff. So I want to say a special thanks to the Chief Justices, Chief Justice Locke, Chief Justice Nectum, for all the work you've done to lead the court um, and to make sure that this happens on an ongoing basis. It is your commitment that means that we get to do this every day. Uh, it takes all of us to get this done. Chief Justice jo uh, Chief First Judge jo Doyle, Boyle, sorry, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> Thank you so much for all you do in the leadership of the probate court. We ma it makes a tremendous difference to all of us in the department, all the families that we serve who are waiting patiently every year to get their court date, right? And to, uh, where's Ms. Gomes? Carolyn? <laughs> so you should know that behind every adoption is a pile of paper about yay wide, a pile of meetings, processes, legal hearings, all kinds of stuff. And it is folks like Carolyn and her team that make it all happen all year long so that the justices can do what they do every single year. Thank you. Lauren. It's my partner in crime. <laughs> she has been a wonderful uh, partner for all of us in this and is out there every day through the Wonder Fund advocating for the things that our kids need. And for every one of the kids in here, there's probably something that she made sure happened for that individual child. Thank you. Thank you. 
thank you to all the DCF social workers. Can I have the social workers raise their hands, please? DCF attorneys as well. The mayor staff, where are you, mayor folks? A National Adoption Day and many other adoption activities, there'll be one this weekend or next weekend, I believe we have something coming up, um, are also works of art. The, um, I want to tell you the one last thing before I go, maybe two. Um, a special thanks to Mayor. Mayor has been recognized this year along with our own Elliot Tailman from Jordans for their work in adoption by the U.S. Children's Bureau. And though, and it, it, this is a very special award. It is for people's commitment to the permanency of children and for lifelong effort that those folks have made. And Mayor and Elliot have made a lifelong effort to support the adoptive needs of kids in the Commonwealth. So thank you to both. And I have no more to say except for one quick thing. And that is, you all are making me flash back to being a high school. <laughs> You're great. You were absolutely fantastic. I love the precision. Good job. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you, Commissioner. I would like to note also, I see Senator Michael Brady is in the audience today. Senator Brady has been, I think, to every National Adoption Day proceeding that we've had here in Brockton. So thank you for attending as well today. Can you check your papers? I hope you took one of them. I believe. Well, there's one missing. Would the Pigeon family please come up? Oh, okay. no, I don't have it. Oh, you? you have it? Oh, so thank you. Well, we should never leave it again. I, I know. I, I'm learning that lesson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Hillary and Kent Pigeon are from Attleboro. They were already parents of two children who are now 11 and 9 when they applied to become foster parents in March of 2020 after deciding they wanted to expand their family through adoption. They were matched with Julian, who was now five, who I think is the shy guy in the front. He transitioned to their home in August of 2021, and the adoption was finalized in May of 2022. Both the ADLU and adoption teams enjoyed working with the family. They reopened their home in October of 2022 and are currently child-specific foster parents for the Arlington office. Would you like to say something? How do you? Mr. Pigeon. Good morning, everyone. We are so honored to be with you to celebrate this very special life-changing day. Um, we are the Pigeon family, Kent, Hillary, Audrey, Blake, and Julian. We were blessed to adopt Julian this past June, and our adoption journey really began when our two children started asking, when is it time for us to have a new brother or sister? And we certainly felt that there was more room in our family and in our life for more children. Um, we didn't have the sense that our family was complete. But in talking to my wife, I quickly came to understand that she had very little desire to experience all the joys of being pregnant for a third time. <laughs> After just a few conversations, we quickly decided, why not look into adopting? We knew we had a fantastic support system between our parents, our siblings, our friends, our community of faith at our church. We had all the help, love, and support we could ever ask for. For most of our lives, uh, when thinking about the topic of adoption, we usually thought of spending thousands of dollars um, to bring a child from overseas into a, their home. While there, that process is important and meaningful, 
it just was not feasible for our family and it's not what we desired. After asking around for a short period of time and talking to other people that have fostered to adopt, we learned all about the fostering to adopt through the DCF system. This seemed like the right fit for us. First, it didn't have a major financial burden. And second, we were able to make an impact right in the community where we were living, and that was incredibly important to us. So I started, I emailed the DCF inquiring about adoption. The process just started rolling from there. Before we knew it, we were vetted and on our way working through our MAP classes. Our adoption worker was so wonderful throughout the whole process, guiding us, encouraging us, and giving us the necessary reality checks, such as this is going to be challenging. This process isn't always smooth, and it's probably going to take a lot longer than you think. So soon our, our home study was complete, and we were approved to be an adoptive home, and we waited. I think you, many of you in this room have uh, been there. And right as soon as we started to have those conversations, is this ever going to happen? That's when we got the call. They matched a child with our family and wanted to tell us about him. Now, you might know they don't let you make your decision at the disclosure meeting, where you learn about the child's name and age and family history and everything that they know. Uh, but after hearing Julian's story and looking at some adorable pictures, we had no question God was leading our lives together and we wanted to move forward. So it's now been a year and a half since that meeting and we are extremely thankful for how smooth the process went for us because we know that that's not always the case. And being the realist in our marriage and not the optimist like my husband, I prepared myself for the worst. Up until that very day, I was convinced somebody was going to show up to the courtroom and take him away from me and I'd never see him again. Thankfully, that didn't happen. Adopting Julian was one of the best things our family ever did. And we look forward to all the years we have ahead to watch him grow. Often through the process of adopting, we thought about how much we're doing for him or all the changes our family is gonna go through. But what we didn't realize and definitely overlooked is how much of a blessing he was to our family. Our family is better because Julian is a part of it. For everyone here today that will be adopting a child, thank you. We are genuinely so happy for you. Our community is better because of you. For the folks who are providing help and support for those families, Thank you. You will never know the blessing that you are and the hope and encouragement that you give us. Thank you. To close, we, we simply wanted to leave with uh, giving you a challenge. So, so here it is. Everyone here, whether you're an adoptive parent or just someone who's supporting, Talk about adoption. Tell the adoption story. Shine light on the impact that adoption has played in your life or the life of someone you know. Let other people see and hear your stories so that they'll be encouraged and emboldened to maybe step up and make a difference. You never know how just a simple conversation might have a ripple effect that will in turn help another child like Julian forever. That's how we heard about it. And so share your stories with others. That's our challenge to you. Thank you so much. And thank you all for being here.
Court, all rise. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. All persons having anything to, to do before the Honorable Judge Foley and Judge Stewart, justices of this juvenile court now sitting in Brockton within or for the county of Plymouth, draw near, give your attendance, and you shall be heard. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the South of the Court. This court is now in session. You may be seated. Good morning, Your Honors. We are on floor docket number 22-18-0106-TN in regards to Amaria Justine Corden pike for the adoption to finalization of adoption today. Good morning, Your Honor. Jenna Fernandes on behalf of the department. The department happily presents Amira Pike to be adopted by Laura Joyce. She's present with her brother, Jordan, her sister, Kalia, her grandparents, and family and friends tonight. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us today. We're all to see. And this is Amira. 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 Um, well, I want to welcome everybody here today, friends and family. Uh, it's been a long morning. Um, in reading through the documents provided by the Department um, and the of our attorney as well, regarding the line of work, the work of the juvenile court. Um, so you're very well acquainted uh, with what we do. And for those who don't know, um, first I want to thank the department, any social workers, any attorneys from the department. Um, they do understand what we do in juvenile court, and that some days are. are Sad day, more sad days than that. Uh, and so on today's day, uh, thank you for sharing this with us. Because this is one of those bright days, and we really appreciate you sharing it with all of us. And I want to thank you for opening your heart and home to all three of these kiddos, and we're making this one of the family. I can see she fits in very well uh, already. And Judge Stewart, would you? And I have seen you Judge Stewart as well. Okay. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Uh, so this is a really warm time for us here in the court, but first I want to say, why is everyone so quiet? <laughs> okay, because today is an adoption, right? So let's give uh, Laura Joyce and her family a round of applause. Fun and love, it's the best day ever. And Attorney Joyce, congratulations to you. We wish you well. We always appreciate your hard work and um, you know, may all your dreams come true for your family. So thank you all for being here. Okay. Of the identity of relations of the and petitions 
the court is most satisfied that we are more than sufficient to continue to raise this child and provide her with suitable education. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make this quick. It is therefore decreed that this petition will be allowed, and from this day forward, this child shall be your child for all legal and just purposes, and her name shall be changed to Lyra Lyra. Lyra Caroline Joyce, which shall be her legal name. From this state forward, this adoption is final and irrevocable. Ready? Oh, <laughs> 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 we all not? Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 